Hey, what's up everybody? Alien X Gaming here again with another interview. Um, tonight I've got somebody from the community and he just started creating some content. Um, tonight I've got Sir Little Wolf. How you doing today? I'm doing good and hello bipeds. <laughs> That's like your signature uh, thing when you come in. That's awesome. Um, okay, so <laughs> I've, got, um, I've got some questions for you to try to kind of pick your brain a little bit um, so people can get to know you because you interact with a lot of people on, on chat. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's kind of why I'm doing this. It's basically so that people can get to know who they're talking to a little bit, you know, nothing deep and personal, but you know, it kind of makes you still feel like you know them a little bit better, you know, and like get to enjoy coming on this, on the, uh, the different chats that are here and there and be like, Oh, cool. He's here. You know, Hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. But so that's the point of this. Um, you know, just so people can yeah. talk about themselves, you know, I mean, I hate talking about myself, but. Is what it is. So, um, <laughs> if you're ready for the <laughs> questions, let's go ahead and start this up, man. Are you ready? All righty. Yeah. Okay. Why did you choose the name that you currently have on YouTube? Um, actually, it was a name given to me by a friend of mine when I was staying at a shelter. Um, he just saw how I was acting with other people in there, and I always wore kind of a husky hat and so he saw that I was kind of gaining my own little pack and he just started calling me a little wolf okay all right see I like to hear like the backstories on some people's um people's names and it's it's very interesting how they come up with that um I'm not going into how I came up with mine right now anyway um <laughs> <laughs> and uh how old are you I'm gonna be 39 in March excellent we are almost the same age um let's see here and where are you from i'm from anchorage alaska right now <laughs> is that where you're originally from uh yeah i was actually born here and then grew up in florida and wisconsin and then came back up to alaska all right uh do you have any siblings that uh live near you or around the country or anything um, right now I have an adopted brother in the city, and then out in the village, I have to count them again, let's see here. I have Gurley, my little sister, Mike, my older brother, Jackie, my younger brother, Jeffrey, Daniel, there's about like five of us. <laughs> All right. At least from my actual mom, there's five of us. Okay. <laughs> And um, how about you? Are you are you married? Do you have kids? Um, what's your situation? I'm single right now, kind of looking for another mate. But um, I do have one daughter who just turned 14 in December. And it was actually her golden birthday because her birthday is on the 14th. Cool. Cool. Uh, do you have any pets? Um, no, not right now. We used to have a bunch of cats and things like that, and one of them was a kind of a mix between a Manx and a Coon cat, so she had like the bob ears of the, um, of the other cat, and then no tail, so wow. <laughs> she was, she was my little furball. That is awesome. Very, very cool. Um, so what kind of car do you drive? Actually, I don't. I'm, I'm not really one for driving. Uh, I have too much on my mind most of the time, and I'd rather just either walk or take the bus or okay. uh, ride my bike. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, what kind of music do you like to listen to? Well, yeah, uh, you get this one a lot, but I do listen to basically everything, it, and it does depend on my mood, but... For the most part, I listen to country music. Okay. Did you ever play any instruments growing up, or do you play any instruments now? Um, actually, the cool thing that I did play, and really the only instrument, was the didgeridoo. Um, there was a guy who came through a shop that I was working at that was called the Sleeping Lady Tea Shop. And he was giving lessons on how to play, and he was making his own didgeridoos out of PVC pipe. And I wound up buying one of them and uh, playing it for about three years. And there was a shop that was like 
Mermaid Express or something like that. It was one of those like weird new agey type shops and they had a bunch of them in there too and I wound up buying one of those for like 15 bucks. Hmm. Okay. So I had to look it up because I had no clue what a didgeridoo was. Um, it looks fairly similar to a, a flute, only huge. Uh, kind of. I mean, you actually sit there and press your mouth into the hole and play with it that way. Okay. What's actually kind of funny is I kind of learned how to make that noise with just my mouth. Because I was watching a movie that was called Tommy Tricker and the Stamp Traveler. And the guy would sit there and he took a piece of... a. Uh, um, a fence, the metal pole in a fence, and started playing it like it was a didgeridoo. So I just started mimicking the noise, and it was, just kind of came about that I, that's how I knew how to play it. And the guy was surprised when I started easily playing the didgeridoo, and I've never really tried it before. Cool. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the uh, the Ricola uh, commercial. Ricola. Although I don't know, some sort of actual <laughs> Almost, like. Yeah. You know, flute thing, whatever. <laughs> all right, all right, moving on. Um, <laughs> um, so what was your first job? Um, actually, I was delivering newspapers in Wisconsin from the time I was 11 years old till the time I was about uh, 13, I think. And okay. so I, I always had a weird sleeping schedule. I would go to bed at like 10 p.m., wake up at like 2 a.m., get the papers ready, and I had two paper routes set next to each other, so I would be gone for like an hour. And so the whole time was just like getting all the papers ready to go and stuff like that. And it put money in my pocket, so I was happy. That works. You ever um, spark a memory and like you get like an odd scent that reminds you of something from back in the day? That just happened because I, for some reason, smelled newspapers when I was a kid too. And like I was like, I did the same thing, like, you know. Uh, Ride my bike, you know, toss the paper, you know. It's just bizarre. Anyway, um, cool. Let's <laughs> see. Do you, um, are you currently working? Do you, what do you do for a living? Um, right now I'm kind of a housekeeper for an older lady. Um, I go over to her place maybe three or four times a week and do like three, four hours worth of work sometimes for uh, yeah. around ten bucks or so. And it, it's, not much, but hey, it keeps money in my pocket and keeps me on tobacco, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, um, so what kind of hobbies do you have? Um, well, mostly it's either watching movies or playing video games or listening to podcasts, and kind of my channel has now kind of become my hobby because I get to sit there and talk about different things that I do and apparently people like listening to it so I'm gonna keep doing it <laughs> heck yeah heck yeah man um so how did you uh, how did you find this community um that's kind of a longish story but I'll try and shorten it um you I had a friend of mine of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had a friend of mine who I've known, good lord, since I was in like the second grade, I think. And we kind of lost touch when I moved away from uh, Florida. But we would keep in contact through mail and things like that. And then I found him on Facebook. Okay. And for a long time he didn't post anything really. But then he started posting different memes about the earth being flat. And I thought he was just kind of joking and just putting random crap up. And then I started talking to him one day, and he was like, No, dude, this stuff is real. I mean, you you have to look into it. And I was like, You know that stuff is bull, right? And he's like, No, dude, you have to watch this video. And he sent me the Eric Dubay's 200 proofs that we do not live on a spinning ball. And literally my... My adopted mom was sitting next to me while I was watching it. And I was kind of stoned at the time watching it. So, like, at first, some of the things were like, oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, that kind of makes <laughs> sense. And then, like, my brain actually kicked in. <laughs> oh, God. And it was like, no, it's, it's like, no, no, no. These are <laughs> stupid. 
this guy is an idiot, and then next thing I know, my IQ points suddenly drop like <laughs> 10 points. <laughs> and and so I started looking up different questions that they were asking, you know, like, why do, uh, when you're on a boat, why do they use a flat map? And so I looked up on YouTube uh, naval navigation and found a quick half-hour video and watched that and tried sending it to my friend. And he's like, oh, yeah, well, I haven't had time to watch it yet, so I'm sorry. And it's like, well, dude, you sent me a three-hour damn video. Yeah, right. I spent three hours watching that, <laughs> and you can't watch a half-hour video? <laughs> and then I just started looking up uh, different people online for Flat Earth stuff, and I wound up finding uh, Red's Rhetoric. Okay. And... Uh, his Google Hangouts and him talking to different uh, Flat Earthers, and then I found his debates on Non Sequitur. And then I, from there, found FTFE and Team, and then I found our community. And then I started watching stuff with uh, Sit Down with Debunkers and um, EIE Network and stuff like that, and uh, Professor Stick. Professor Dave and mm -hmm. all of them and it's just uh, I just jumped into the chat one day and just started talking to people <laughs> and suddenly I'm very popular <laughs> it's like oh my god I never thought it would happen like that <laughs> yeah like you know that's that I like that as well as you know you come into the stream and say hey what's up and then you, you have you know X amount of replies and it just makes you kind of feel you know kind of good inside you know what I mean it's kind of cool yeah <laughs> I've had a few of them say that um, they actually feel more comfortable when they know I'm in chat. <laughs> I, and it's like, okay, <laughs> that's cool. And I just love going into a chat and just interacting. Sure. I see a lot of people throw you bacon when you come in and all that other stuff. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. I get paid with begging scripts. Excellent. No. <laughs> Okay, so um, you mentioned earlier that um, you play video games every now and then. What kind of uh, what kind of games are you into? What do you what do you like to play? Um, actually, I like playing um, lots of different role playing games or uh, dungeon crawling games. For some reason, they just kind of hold on to my attention a bit more. Okay. Um, like right now, I'm playing a game called uh, Delver, and it's like a first person view. And it's all pixelated and everything, but it, it you go in different levels of a cavern and just find different weapons and armor and things like that. And just I don't know why it just seems to hold my attention a little bit more than most games. Okay, that's cool. Um, did you play any sports when you were growing up, or do you play any sports now? Um, not right now, but when I was uh, in middle school and stuff like that, and growing up in Florida, my grandparents were big into tennis, and so I wound up playing tennis from the time I was about four until I was about 15, and then I also did uh, swimming, because, I mean, you live in Florida, it's 100 degrees outside, you gotta <laughs> know how to swim and stay cool, and so I did that too. Probably up until high school. Okay. Um, do you travel a lot, um, like for vacations or anything? <laughs> um, actually, I haven't really been out of Alaska since about 2015. Um, but when I was with my dad, we did drive between Florida and Wisconsin about three different times. Ooh, excuse me, three different times. Yeah. And so just stuff like that it was just uh i love being on the road with my dad and that's something i would like to talk to a flat earther at some point about because uh, it's about 1549 miles from where we were in florida to the tip of wisconsin where we were at and so when you look at the odometer on the car that measures all the miles you traveled you trust the odometer on your car because it tells you, you know, hey, you need to change your oil now, you need to do this now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you can trust trust the measurement there, why not on other things? So it, it's not like I haven't measured the distance between Florida and Wisconsin. <laughs> Sorry. All right. 
Fair enough, man. Uh, what is your favorite food? Um, actually, it's fried chicken. Uh, growing up down in the south and stuff like that, and then also being up in Wisconsin, it's just always been my favorite food, and if you smother it in barbecue, I'm even more happy. <laughs> Have you noticed um, a difference in uh, fried chicken from Florida to Wisconsin to Alaska? Um, it depends on what stores you go to, I think, because up here we have uh, Cars, which is actually now Safeway, okay. because Safeway bought them out. And we also have a place called Fred Meyer's, which for a grocery store, uh, you know, deli type place, that they have, I think, the best tasting fried chicken. But... The, all other places, I think they're pretty much uniform because, I mean, we do have KFC up yeah. here. We do have uh, Popeyes up here. But usually I go to Safeway or something because it's down the street. <laughs> okay, that works. Yeah, I, I try to um, try pizza from different places because everybody's got their own style. Um, you know, so you got the, the New York style. You've got, um, like, the Southern mm -hmm. style, which is... I don't know why they call it pizza. But anyway, um, you know, and then, of course, you got Chicago style, where, where I'm from. And, of course, I'm a little biased, but I, I like that the best, you know. But um, <laughs> so, like, you know, and then you get the different tastes and all that stuff like that from the sauces. And it's, 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 that's, that's what I do. Anyway, so you're a fried chicken guy. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I do love <laughs> pizza, too. I just have to be careful with it because uh, me and dairy products don't really mix well. But I'll put up with it for pizza and ice cream and yogurt and stuff like that. But I actually need to try and find that one uh, lactose pill that you can take to be able to digest lactose better. Mm. But if I, if I eat a pizza, I wind up having a really bad stomach ache and then uh, the runs afterwards type thing. But Excellent. I'll put up with that for <laughs> pizza. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> Oh goodness, that was a little too much information there, sir. Now I cannot unhear that. No, I... you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. No. All right. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's move on to some of the content that you um, you're part of. Um, so you're part of the Four Swordsmen, which um, is a relatively new group. Is that correct? Yeah, we just started. We messed around a little bit with the idea in December. A little bit after I started my channel and Tanner started his channel and we were just messing around in Steve's pub one day and just kind of shooting the breeze and I think Steve actually they'll say I was the one that came up with the idea but no uh, I can go back and probably find all the information but Steve I think was the one that said we should be live streaming this stuff and then um, we wound up going into Irish Demon's channel. Tanner wound up saying something about it, and I just asked the question, are we really going to do the swordsman thing? And then next thing I know, Bowhammer throws up a super chat naming us as the four uh, swordsmen, <laughs> naming me, Tanner, Steve, and, of course, Bowhammer. And it's like, oh, my God, so now we are actually a thing. And right after that uh, stream, I went ahead right away and started up our Discord channel. Okay. All right. And um, Four Swordsman has its own uh, YouTube channel, is that correct? Yes, we do. Um, actually, Steve set that one up, and he set up our email, which... Uh, yeah, he set those up, and I set up the Discord, but yeah. Okay. Let's see. Um, what kind of content um, are you guys going to be doing on the Swordsman? Um, it's usually kind of random. Um, I think what we're going to be doing is uh, bringing up different topics that uh, are kind of important to us at the time. And it's like once a week, each one of us will try and bring a topic. And sometimes we get to them, sometimes we don't. Because we want to try and keep our streams about an hour and a half-ish. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we can get to each person's topic and other times not. But it's like last week I really thought we should bring up the fact that we kind of should stop doing the debates of Flat Earth. Because we're just getting to the point now where we're just having parrots. 
and it's with all due respect to like FTFE and Red's Rhetoric um, I love those guys to death but it's like we're just getting repeats of everything and they're basically parrots now mm -hmm. I hear you um, and you have your own channel um, called Little Wolf's Den and um, yes. what kind of content do you put on that? Um, well, since I started it in December, it was kind of geared a little towards, like, um, I did an episode where I went through the movie, um, A Christmas Carol, which the BBC had done, and I wound up grabbing screenshots of that and inserting my picture in there, and just kind of talking about the movie, and then I found some old radio plays and put those up on a thing, and... I think what I'm really going to be doing with my channel is finding old uh, public domain things and bringing them to the forefront because they have a whole bunch of old um, sci-fi movies and horror movies and old radio plays that I think are really fun and those are things that I spent so much time uh, watching because I mean it's free you can find it and you know hey uh, people I think should know about it or hear about it and it's just kind of a random thing whatever pops into my little brain that day and usually when something pops in there it pops out so all right and if it <laughs> sticks then it's worth it right <laughs> yeah <laughs> excellent all right um let's see here do, 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 do. um I guess what was your who would have been your or what was your biggest influence when you were coming up with the content for like the movie or the um the uh, radio shows and stuff like that or did that just pop in the head um it kind of just popped into my head like i said um i during the especially during the winter and fall time uh for some reason I get this compulsion to start downloading uh, radio plays and dramas and things like that and just listen to them. And it was just one of those things where it's like, you know, some other people might like listening to these and it'll usually kill about a half hour for people and, you know, hey, just relax, sit back, grab some coffee or tea and just have some fun with it. Okay. Would you say that that's um, your favorite content to kind of watch on your own? Um, usually on my own. I like watching... Um, I know it's kind of bad because they're not really the best area to look for information, but I love watching the History Channel stuff on YouTube. I do as well. Um, I, I, I love watching things like The Universe and Monster Quest and things like that, and I basically it's like documentaries and things like that that where you can learn different stuff um things like blue planet or anything like that they had one called the future is wild and i thought that was an amazing one <laughs> but the americanized version was just weird and it was only about an hour and a half and i found the actual bbc one and that one was around three hours Oh, wow. And so there was so much of it that was cut out that when you sit down and watch it, it's just, I know it's kind of scientists looking to the future and thinking, you know, what kind of sandbox crap can we throw in here? But it's just stuff that gets my imagination going. And yeah. that's the kind of stuff I like to do with other people because it's, if you don't use your imagination for at least a half hour a day, I think you're not living life right. <laughs> All right, that works. Um, do you have any specials coming up with either on the Swordsman or your own uh, channel? Um, I think in next month at some point I'm gonna be interviewed by the EIE Network on their Mega Mirror channel or uh, show that they're doing and. Um, I don't think there's really anything special with the Swordsman, except for just our usual stream, which I think for us, it's Saturday. And then for Steve, it's Sunday, since he's a time traveler. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, f I think he was 15 hours or 14 hours ahead of me. You're three hours behind me. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's cool, like, talking to people from around the planet, to be honest. Because, like, I know that if it's nighttime here, it's generally going to be daytime-ish for Irish and Tony and those guys. So, you know, like, they'll be more active on Discord or messaging or whatever than, you know, than where it's daytime for me and they're passed out, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to talk about um, or tell us about yourself that I didn't ask you yet? Um, I just like having fun messing around inside the chats. And, I mean, like you said on one of your other interviews that I was probably one of the first person to talk to you inside the chat and really start getting to know you. And I kind of like doing that with almost all the other people in the chats too mm -hmm. because the way I look at it is if a person is ignored in the chat then they might not want to come back and that's kind of what you want uh, for the community to build up you want them to feel comfortable and feel wanted mm -hmm. and so it's important to me to at least say something to them and even if it's some of the flat earthers that come in you know, I might jab at them now and then, but then other times I'll also say, hey, how you doing? How was your holiday? Whatever. You're dumb as fuck. But, you know, <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah, it, it, interaction with the community is, is something that draws people in, keeps them coming, um, exactly like you said. Because, you know, it's nice to interact with people while you're watching the same subject that keeps your attention, and you obviously know that they they watch it too. Um, so, you know... Because the other option, of course, is watch it later when it's not premiering or live or something like that. And then you don't have any real interaction. You're more so just watching something at that point. I, I like to be part of the action. I like to say, hey, what's going on? Hey, you're a dick. Or, you know, there's all this stuff. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, you know? definitely. But um, And like you, like you said with my, uh, you've said it many times before, like, don't you ever sleep? <laughs> and it's like, you know, yeah, I do sleep maybe three to five hours and then... Especially with the Beardsman show on Sundays, because for me, they come on at like 4 o'clock in the morning. Ooh. And so I usually try and stay up to watch them, because I just, I love their content, and I love waiting to see if PhD Tony is going to hulk out on somebody and just yell at Demon or whoever he's <laughs> mad at at the moment. And I just love it. I and love seeing all the different people <laughs> that we usually do, and... I mean, it. I just think it's amazing how popular I became, and uh, Mama Raisin has been kind of working with me on my, kind of my self-esteem, because I usually say I can't believe how popular I am, and she'll say, you know, you need to own that, because you are loved in our community, and people like you around, and so just accept it, and so that's kind of what I did. <laughs> Yeah, I would definitely say that you're you're definitely a big part of the uh, the community, um, and especially in the chat. So I mean, we definitely appreciate when you show up. I do, you know. I look forward to seeing mm -hmm. people's names that are respond back to me that I can kind of you know fuck with a little bit on in the chat, and they'll fuck right back. You know, it's you know it's good stuff, man. But um, but yeah, you are definitely definitely part of our community. So I mean, we we definitely appreciate. I do. Um, I don't know how many more yeah. times I'm gonna say <laughs> definitely, but anyway. Um, other than that, that's really about all I got for you, man. Um, so I do definitely appreciate you taking the time to uh, come on here, um, letting us kind of, well, let me pick your brain a little bit, getting some people to kind of get to know you a little bit better. You know, I, I mean, it wasn't horribly personal and it definitely was not in any specific order, but, you know, I think people, so far people have been liking this idea of trying to get to know who they're interacting with, which is, you know, it's really kind of, it's kind of, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. and yeah, it's definitely fun getting to sit down and watch some of your other interviews and hearing what they have to say. And uh, with people like when you had R and Ra on there, or you get MC Tune, and it's like, like others have said, you know, it's kind of cool that they can have so many like thousand followers or whatever but they'll still come back and talk to some of us who only have like a hundred followers and yeah. i'm surprised i have 112 and i'm just <laughs> i'm tickled pink about that it's just amazing that 112 people 
want to follow this idiot ding <laughs> from Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> I think I hit 155 today. I was like, holy crap. So that was cool. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure that we'll be, we'll be talking back and forth as our, our own channels uh, grow too. So, I mean, that's going to be kind of cool to watch, you know? So I'm looking forward yeah. to the future. I hope, you know, I hope we can continue to entertain people and, you know, get to know everybody around and just have everybody just stay kind of close, you know, whatever kind of stuff subjects or whatever that we're watching, whether it be flat earth or hopefully something different soon. But, you know, I hope everybody yeah. can kind of still stick together. Um, aside from that, I'm going to have the links down in the description for uh, little wolf's um, personal channel, as well as the four swordsman. Uh, so you guys can click on that, go like and sub their stuff, watch, watch some of their stuff. Their conversations are pretty interesting. Um, I've watched a few of the, uh, the swordsman uh, streams <laughs> that you guys had. Um, like when I, when I went to your, your, the swordsman thing and I saw like the intro that you made or whatever. And like, um, I, f I forgot how oh it goes, but I was, I was like, I was like, oh shit, that's, that's little wolf, isn't it? And Stevie's like, yep. <laughs> that was good actually stuff, man. tanner came up with that opening and then i <laughs> we were talking in discord one day and i just kind of read it out and all of a sudden i was voted to be the one to do the opening and it's like oh crap yeah right. i should have kept my mouth shut <laughs> that's awesome all right other than that if you guys like this interview um there's going to be plenty more coming up uh like and subscribe down below here um, I definitely appreciate it. I think this is kind of fun to get to know your YouTuber. So, you know, stay tuned for more. And until then, thank you guys very much for watching the video. Take care and stay safe. All right. Bye-bye, bipeds. Bye,